Hello, everyone. Welcome to our virtual Scholars Forum presentation about our capstone project, which was creating a graduate student association at Chapman. My name is Nick Jekyll, and I'm currently the Housing Communications Coordinator for Chapman's Office of Residence Life and First Year Experience. I'm a driven leader whose personal why is to help people grow personally, professionally, and as leaders. I'm passionate about student government for many reasons. I had a memorable experience during my time in student government during my undergrad, and I want others to have a similar experience. I also know the power that student governments have and how graduate students at Chapman don't really have a way to advocate for themselves or improve their graduate experience. For example, when I got to Chapman, I assumed that graduate students were a part of the Student Government Association. However, when I went to vote in my first campus election, I was not even able to log into the election system. This was my first realization that student government as a graduate student at Chapman was non-existent. Fast forward many months and Boston and I are trying to solidify our capstone project. This is when we have learned that there are many unsuccessful attempts to create graduate student associations in the past. We decided to break that trend. We chose to form a graduate student association as our capstone project because of the long-term campus-wide impact it would have for years to come. Hi, my name is Basti Lopez. I'm a candidate for the Master of Arts in Leadership Development at Chapman University. Not only am I a candidate for this degree, but I am privileged to work at Santana College as the dual enrollment coordinator. I consider myself to be both an advocate and a passionate youth and community organizer. I like to work alongside underrepresented and underserved communities in hopes of creating sustainable change. In middle school, I was part of student government and it was beneficial to me because it gave me a jumpstart to see myself as both a leader and a scholar. In addition to this, the following reasons conveyed me to take on the formalization of a graduate student association at Chapman. First, I realized there was a lack of programming and restricted access to resources for graduate students. Secondly, there were changes being made at this institution without the input of the graduate student body. And the final reason why I collaborated on this project is rather personal. Currently, I do not have the privilege to fully engage in the democratic process in this country because of my immigration status. I think about how other students may find themselves in this situation, and after doing much research, a GSA can have significant impacts on individuals who may be limited in one way or another from engaging in society and in the democratic process. All right, let's talk a little bit about some of the literature we reviewed to be prepared for this project. In 2010, Walter May found that student governing bodies have existed for hundreds of years. They grew from small societies to assist students succeed in their academics to large nonprofit organizations that represent all students. They used to be primarily comprised of only white wealthy males. However, they now reflect the growing diversity of many higher education institutions. Student governing bodies are imperfect, but they have greatly improved to be more powerful, more inclusive, and more diverse since their inception. In 2016, Joanna Gilmore, Annie Wofford, and Michelle Maher found that faculty identified motivation or student persistence as the single most important factor in being successful in and completing graduate school. They also noted that very few, if any, entities at the university are doing anything to actively support students' motivation throughout their graduate degree. This one void that graduate student associations could fill. Creating programming that supports graduate students on their academic journey and supports them in maintaining their motivation to complete their degree is one way that they could do this. In addition, a GSA is important because it contributes to democratic and civic engagement efforts. Furthermore, it can, can also contribute to adult development of graduate students. The following researchers highlight how crucial it is to cultivate democratic and civic engagement efforts in higher education. For example, in 2019, Silvia Hurtado argued that one of the key roles of higher education is to cultivate civically engaged citizens in order to spark an interest in American democracy. Civic learning and engagement benefits both educators and students because leadership opportunities create citizens that are capable of understanding the differences and who see conflict as an opportunity to learn. They also foster community building processes, uh, which are characteristics of a strong democracy. According to Gessamer, Toff, Ross, and Johnson in 2006, Graduate and professional programs contribute to adult development because they promote and assess mastery of the discipline, but they might not be structured to attend effectively, attend effectively to the non-academic needs of students. That is why student affairs professionals with their knowledge of student development 
and their history of attending to the academic and non-academic needs of undergraduate students can play a significant role in, in enhancing the graduate student experience. If done successfully, Student Affairs opens itself to a wealth of opportunities for collaboration with academic affairs and graduate departments because Student Affairs is positioned to engage graduate students across departments, provide improved campus services, and foster a campus-wide graduate community. Next, we're going to talk about the history and context of the GSA at Chapman University. Before we got involved, the GSA existed and graduate students participated in it for the most part. However, there were lots of challenges in terms of the time commitment and the attendance of student representatives at the meetings. They were told that they needed a constitution in order to operate and to be recognized by the university. Jacqueline, a graduate student from the business college, stepped up and took the lead on writing a GSA constitution. However, circumstances came up and she was unable to complete it. Although circumstances came up, I think something that we collectively enjoyed working on was working with this uh, GSA group. We didn't expect to formally take on this responsibility in addition to our deliverables. However, the benefits and the importance of why a GSA needs to exist at Chapman is what united these students to come together and work alongside with us. So in order for you to understand why it's so important, we have a couple of testimonials here um, from Angelica and Joseph, who will share why it's important that a GSA exists and what their role is in it. Hi, I'm Angelica Rivera. I'm a second year MBA student. Um, originally, I was part of the team that was in GSA last year. Um, so that's part of the reason why I wanted to help the working group now was to make sure that we can get it back on track for next year. Um, I think it's really important to have GSA because our, all of our grad students in every program um, deserve to have a say in what's going on throughout their school, what's going on in their education. I think it's good that grad students have a way to be heard and to be seen. Hello, my name is Joseph, first year MBA student at Chapman. I've been part of the GSA working group for a year now and I am a pharmacist by profession and as a pharmacist I can attest to the importance of having this one organization that would represent the different voices of different um, individuals and so the GSA or Graduate Students Association is hoping to fulfill that role. There are different schools at Chapman and each school has students that have different needs and so the goal is to have this body, the GSA, that would represent the students and voice out any concerns, issues, and just communicate with the administration. And so I urge you guys to support the GSA. And again, my name is Joseph. Thank you for listening. Let's discuss some of the things we learned from this project. Learning lesson number one was flexibility. This entire process taught us many lessons about how important it is to be flexible. First, we changed our initial topic to move forward with creating the Graduate Student Association. But once we received direct and constructive criticism from the first GSA group meeting about our work and our process, it made us shift our plan once again. From a team of two, we decided that in order to be inclusive and democratic, we needed to have the collaboration and input of other graduate students. This initially was frustrating because it adjusted our timeline significantly but we realized we needed to listen to our peers because that is why we took on this project in the first place, which is to serve graduate students. Another way we learned flexibility was during the campus shift to remote learning because of COVID-19. This is something that has impacted everyone and we were no exception. Bossy and I were able to pivot to Zoom meetings relatively easy. However, the chances of doing an on-campus election became zero as we would have no way to easily connect with folks or generate support for GSA. This meant further adjusting our expectations even more in order to make sure we had realistic goals for our project. Our advisor's flexibility made this process relatively painless as we knew that they would be understanding when we explained why deliverables needed to change. In addition to the situation above, uh, one of the things that consistently required our flexibility was dealing with the bureaucracy of higher education. Uh, because we both come from the background of higher ed and we work in this professional capacity, we figured that we would be able to adjust 
rather quickly. However, it was actually a little bit more difficult than that for us to be content with trying to make change in a few months while understanding that the bureaucracy of higher education operated at what times felt like slow motion. This definitely transitions to our second learning lesson, which is looking at the big picture. Many times we had to come to the conclusion and make the decision, should we do what's best for us in our project or do what's best for graduate students and graduate student association and not be able to see the hard work that we have done pay off as we would have hoped. As Nick has highlighted, um, in a nutshell, the two theories that we ended up using the most throughout this process was both team leadership theory and shared leadership theory. Team leadership was actually really crucial and beneficial to the enhancement of a GSA at Chapman. For example, this quote alone says, team leadership theory is about what the leader or leaders do to facilitate team performance. Constantly, we had to readjust and adjust and remind folks that they had to be flexible and fluid with this process as well. As, for, as with shared leadership theory, this following quote summarizes it as well. It says, as groups experience the positive results associated with engaging in shared leadership, they invest in it even more. We saw this right away after the first meeting that we had receiving that constructive criticism, and then taking that and reassuring the team that we were gonna do our best to provide an inclusive GSA, left a lot of the individuals um, with a happy note. They ended up leaving very content, um, expressing to both of us that they were excited that this was actually going to happen at Chapman. And although our timeline shifted once and once again, I feel that we were able to come to this shared experience where both the students and ourselves are going to be ensured that there will be positive results from this. So the final lesson that we took away from this experience was communication and specifically effective communication as being a key to moving things forward. Um, we are taking specifically learning lessons and quotes from the book, Crucial Conversations. And something that we experienced throughout this journey was that communicating with administrators was a challenge from the start. However, we had to create healthy and safe dialogue for students in order for them to invest in these efforts. Because from our experience of connecting with the former GSA group that was trying to establish um, and get ratified the constitution and all the other moving parts that they needed, they had expressed that certain communication was not going as it should or that they were being silenced or that administrators were withdrawing, which means that they were pulling out of conversations altogether or exiting from that conversation conversation both physically and as well as metaphorically speaking. There was also that sense of a violent type of conversations that we experienced throughout this process. When we first received that constructive criticism, um, it was really difficult for us to continue navigating the conversation forward because when a violent conversation starts, any verbal uh, a strategy that attempts to convince, control, or even compel others that your point of view is not correct definitely can be devastating to the working efforts of a conversation and let alone a graduate student association. So what we learned from this, um, especially from this book of Crucial Conversations, is this method, which is the STATE method, um, which is an acronym for the following. STATE, S is for share your facts, T is for tell your story, A is for ask others' paths, and T is talk tentatively, and E is encourage testing. Throughout this journey, and Nick will highlight this more in the next part, is that as we continued working on this GSA, we had to gather our facts. We did our research. We ended up connecting with different individuals throughout our whole journey just to get to where we were at right now. Um, we had to ask for other people and what, what it was like, what were their roadblocks, what would we anticipate in order to strategize and be able to, to, to talk tentatively to new individuals that we were going to encounter. Um, and constantly just being flexible in the sense of encouraging ourselves and encouraging others to engage in conversations even when we knew we were asking for a lot. Especially as we mentioned with uh, COVID-19, individuals were not in that type of capacity or bandwidth as they were in person. So we had to encourage different avenues to connect with individuals. 
Very well said. We also had to ask for help multiple times throughout this process. Um, early on, we needed to connect with multiple graduate students from each academic college, and we had never really interacted with folks outside of our own academic college up to this point. So we connected with deans, assistant deans, department chairs. We sent them a cold email explaining what we were trying to do, communicating our story, throwing ourselves at their mercy, for lack of better words. And they delivered. Um, they were able to re-emphasize re and uh, value our story, talk about how important it is with the work that we were doing. And also they connected us to students that were able to be important players on our working group and allow us to move forward with our capstone project and enhance democracy at Chapman. We could not have done it without those individuals and we're forever grateful for the help of them and our working group. And on that note, we'd like to say thank you to a lot of instrumental people. We cannot name or list all of them, but the ones that we are able to name right now, you're seeing on the screen. We could not have done it without you and your support. So thank you. Yes, thank you so much for your support, your dedication, your guidance. If anything, at one point or another, it definitely restored my faith in the fact that there are educational leaders that I myself one day aspire to be an educational leader that can empathize and that can advocate for students at that level and use that positionality to continue the good work forward. So thank you so much.